All right, welcome to youth service, right? Are you excited for today's service? Nah, are you excited for today's service? But yeah, because it's on a special day, all right? Today we, we have about 17 young people getting baptized. So can we just welcome them to the front right now? Come, let's welcome them. Woo! Da, na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Come, come, come. Woo! Continue clapping until they are all on the, at the front, all right? Come, come. Woo! Come, come. Here, here, here. Here, fill, fill, fill the part. Fill this part. Fill this part. Come, come. Fill this part. Yes. Yes. All right. Come. Yeah. Come, come. Yes. No, we are so proud of you. And we're very happy for each one of you here. Why don't you all just turn... Uh, hey, clap, clap for them one more time, all right? One, two, three. <laughs> this is better than winning any awards, all right? Today is a special day for all of you to remember. But before that, can you all turn around and face me for just a while? Turn around and face me, yes. Okay, for those who do not know, in case you don't know, baptism, all right? It's actually an outward expression of our inward faith where we publicly declare our personal decision to follow Jesus. And today, 17 of them decided that, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you the rest of my life. All right. So right now, we're going to enter a time to, dedic to say a pledge to dedicate our lives to the Lord. Are you all ready? After you say, cannot back out already, you understand? <laughs> okay, if you're ready, I'm, we're going to say it together, all right? At the count of three, we'll say it together with you. Can? All right, I'm going to say it to get, together with you. One, two, three. Dear Lord Jesus, as I enter the waters of baptism today, I commit myself wholly to you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and that you've defeated death when you rose again. Today, I lay down my life. I choose to die to self and live for you. I declare that the old has gone and the new is here. May my heart always burn with a passion for you and compassion for people. Please guide me in your everlasting way all the days of my life. In your most precious name I pray, amen. Amen. Before I pray for all of you here, I want you to invite your family members or your cell group to just come to the front and why don't we just lay our hands on them, can? So if you are family members of them or cell group, just come to the front, all right? Be their support right now. Hey, we're going to spend some time praying for them before they go into the water of baptism. Wow. <laughs> And the rest of us, as the rest of them make their way here, why don't you just stand wherever you are? And let's stretch our hands to pray for them or so, okay? Okay, come, come. Let's lay our hands upon them. Shh. <laughs> this exciting day. I'm so happy for all of you here, right? Come. Let's lay our hands on them right now. And the rest of us, let's pray a blessing over their lives. Lord, this day I know it is a happy day. Even as I just stand here looking at each one of you here, I can't help but feel so much joy over each one of you. And I know the Lord Jesus Christ is feeling so happy looking at all of you right now. So I want to pray for each of your sons and daughters here right now. Set them apart for you. May they follow you all the days of their lives. May they always remember this very special day where they choose to decide you, decide to follow you every day of their lives. Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. <laughs> Man, are you ready to get baptized? If you are, make your way to, the, to level two, all right? Just follow Lean over there. Yeah. And the rest of you here, are you ready to worship the Lord? <laughs> ah, are you ready to worship the Lord? It's time to party, right? Shara? Pastor Shara? Yeah, yeah, yes? Yeah, 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 Are you yeah, ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go! Yeah. Woohoo! No. <laughs>
Amen. Jesus is our beautiful Savior. You know, as we continue, yes, come on, give it up for that person. <laughs> Jesus, I
just close our eyes even as we sang the song beautiful savior i just sense the love of god wanting to fill each of every of our hearts right now some of you you may not know him but we have a heavenly father god who loved us so much that gave his one and only son jesus christ to die for us and today the lord wants to fill your heart with his love he wants to fill your heart with his love and his hope some of us here we've been living in darkness but the lord says today call upon the name of jesus for he is powerful and he is a god that loves you and knows whatever that you need so lord this day we thank you lord for what you have done on the cross for us and lord this day i know that you love your sons and daughters here each one of them you love them so much, Lord. And I pray that today will be the day that, Lord, they will encounter you. The day where they recognize that, God, in it, you love them so much and you'll fill their hearts with your love. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We praise you for who you are. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give the loudest praise to the Lord? Amen. Tell the person next to you, God really loves you. God really loves you. And you may run back to your seat. Such a wonderful sight seeing each of them getting baptized. Amen. You know, right now we're going to enter a time of giving our tithes and offering. It's one of our ways that we express our love to God. If you are new here or not in our church, right, don't, don't feel compelled to give. But for the rest of us here as members of our church, let's prepare our hearts to give unto the Lord. All right? There are two ways that you can give, online and on-site. You can give online at fcbc.org.sg slash offering. This link is available at all time. So you can log on to the, get this link to give any time during the week. Just a reminder, the red box of regular ties and offering. And our blue box is our, faith, is our Mission Faith Pledge. The Mission Faith Pledge is over and above the general offering. And is used for the purpose of missions, humanitarian and social initiatives, both local and overseas that promote the gospel of Christ. So make sure you're using your bank mobile app and not your regular QR, QR code scanner. On-site giving can also be done through the offering box located around the auditorium. There are the red and blue sections on the boxes for regular ties and offering and our mission faith pledges respectively. So let's give in faith together. Come, let's close our eyes and prepare our hearts. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to give unto you. Lord, as we give, use it, Lord, to further your kingdom because we desire more of people to come to know you and receive you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, I have a few announcements. The first up, there'll be no youth service, all right, on 13th April, which is two weeks from now. This is because our youth leader, right now, point to your youth leaders, all right, will be away for a retreat. Yeah! All right, okay? But that doesn't mean you don't attend service. Hear this. Shh. You're all encouraged and you must go for our main services, all right, okay? So our leaders will be the one to tell you what to do and where to go, okay? We will check, make sure we have CCTV to check that you're all at services, okay, Ken? All right, okay, so, so we'll all attend the main service instead. So mark this down in your calendar. It's two weeks from now, 13th April, all right? Next up, while we're talking about service, we've got a couple of reminders for you. Firstly, our church-wide weekly prayer meeting this coming Wednesday will be held on-site at TC starting at 8 p.m., all right? We'll see you there. Secondly, you'll be partaking in the Holy Communion next weekend. So if you're joining us online, please remember to prepare your elements before the start of service. Before we move on, here are the events and activities going on next month. You can also find the calendar on our website and our main FCBC Instagram channel. That's all we have for this weekend. And right now, it's my privilege to invite one of the baptism candidates. All right, let's welcome, let's put our hands to welcome Ian. Woo! Who'll be sharing his testimony, all right? Yeah, come, Ian. Woo! Ian, yeah, oh, so many supporters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! Woo! Come. 
，哇哇哇 ，See what you got supporters from young to old 哎，哇。Woo, 我永远支持你耶、yeah. <laughs> ！Don't fall down 啊 ，Don't fall down，OK，、okay, 要 maintain 啊 ，maintain 啊 ，OK， 看 ，OK， come， why don't you share what's your name and what you're doing， alright， and your team and all this， come， share。My name is Ian Lee， I'm a Sec Three student from Saint Hilda Secondary， I am under Pastor Lai Fan and Pastor Roland's team， and my cell leader is Zin and Park， I'm currently serving。As an usher in the welcome team. Welcome team, yeah. Join the welcome team. <laughs> All right. Okay. So when and how do you come to FCBC? I was born and raised in FCBC. So your, so your parents are from FCBC. Yeah. Where are your parents? Where are your parents? Come, come. Where, where? Ah, Eve. Right over there. Your father there, there. Well done. Good job. <laughs> it must have not been easy raising our kids, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So what made you respond to the gospel? Growing up into a Christian family, I just follow my family to church since young. But it was last year's youth camp that I experienced God. It was an unexplainable feeling of peace, and right there and then, I knew God is real and He is with us. Man, then why do you want to get baptized? It's a very important question. Yeah, I want to get baptized because I wanted to grow closer to God after I encountered God in youth camp. I showed more interest in coming to church and serving. That was why I started serving in church, and I wanted more experiences and encounters with God. So, how has your life changed ever since you dedicate your life to Christ? There are two aspects of my life that change since I dedicated my life to Christ. The first is my personal self. I see myself having more control of my emotions and really loving the people around me. In the past, I used to easily agitate. Get agitated, and I will shout at my parents, teachers in school, and friends. I like the patience and the control over my emotions. Wow, mummy, you were correct. Last time he shout a lot. Ah, wow. <laughs> okay, then what else? What else? <laughs> After my encounter with God, the peace that I felt over changed me in a supernatural way. More than just hungering for God more, I found myself being less angry and agitated. The second aspect is my spiritual self. I see myself being more motivated to share the God, the Word of God, with my friends and to serve God. I used to not invite friends for church events and even found myself being sian when I'm at church events. But after this encounter and looking back from the day to now, how He has changed me to be a better person, I really want my friends to get to experience God. Love and change us for the better as well. In the past, a lot of people thought I would never be a good Christian, but it was God that changed me, and now I want to be able to see that my friends can be better through Christ as well. In the same way, I wanted to, eh, I want to, and started serving because I felt it was a way to show God's love to either other people, especially since I've re personally received His love too. So, what do you want to tell the rest of the people here about that, following Christ? That Jesus is the only answer you will ever need. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, something that I know about Ian is he really loves little children. That's why he got so many children there. They're really taking, really shouting, supporting him. Right? Correct. He, and he took care of my son, so I can see he really loves little children. Okay, why don't we stretch our hands right now to just pray a prayer over Ian? Can come, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for Ian. You know, the Lord says today that the Lord will use you powerfully to share His love, to share His people, not just to the little children, but to your friends, to your family members. Because the Lord says today, don't ever look down on yourself because you are young, but always set an example. Because you are the son of you are. God's son, and he you are highly favored. So, Lord, this day we just continue to bless him, set him apart for you. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. Man, can we just give a thanks to Ian? Woo, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now my turn. So y'all must stay here, okay? Stay. I don't go. I'm like, joking. I'm like, joking. <laughs> okay. 
You know, it's such a, such, a, um, such a great day today. I want to encourage all of you here, for those who have come here to, to run, um, support your friends, your friends or family member, continue to ask them, you know, why don't you ask them in your free time and you have time with them later? You know, what makes them want to baptize? I'm sure their story will encourage you. Yeah? All right. And if you are new here, I just want to welcome you. This is um, an exciting place, a family. Continue to just come here every Saturday if you can, if you are free at 5 p.m. This is our youth service. We're always welcome for each one of you here, okay? You know, before we end off the entire baptism service, you know, I'd like to share with you just a short word regarding Easter. Yesterday was Good Friday, and tomorrow is Easter. You know, usually when it comes to Easter, what do you think of? Some of us here, we think of bunnies, Right? We think of eggs, chocolate, right? But actually, Easter is about the empty tomb. Easter is about the empty tomb. You see, the word empty usually don't bring much good news. Unless you're driving towards JB and you see the road empty, you see the queue empty, wow, you thank God for it, correct? But usually the word empty don't really bring much good news. For example, you're very thirsty. You open your water bottle and the bottle is empty. It's like, ah. Oh. Or for example, some of you here, you're driving, right? Parents or leaders, you're driving, and you realize your fuel is empty. It's like, oh no, right? Or maybe some of us here, we go to our ATM account, account we want to draw money, but realize our bank account is empty. <laughs> some of us here, when we go home, we long for company, we long to eat dinner, with people, but we go home to an empty home. Or maybe we have lost someone that we love in our family, ma- family and you realize the home becomes empty. Or some of us, we experience promises. People make promises, but they never, they never say they will do it. We experience empty promises, causing our hearts to be broken. Or some of us, we have empty hearts. We try to do a lot of things to satisfy, but it just doesn't. See, the word emptiness sometimes leads to disappointment, misery, anxiety, and heartaches. But do you want to share with you, the empty tomb actually brings good news. The empty tomb brings good news, which is why Easter, which is represented by the empty tomb, is a day worth celebrating. And that's why I want to share with you two good news of the empty tomb. Two good news of the empty tomb. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew 28, verse 1 to 8. It says this, Early on Sunday morning, as a new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face, sho- his face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was lying, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went there, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grabbed his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to live for Galilee and they will see me there. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for gathering us all here. Lord, I know today you have a special special message for each of your children here. And I pray this day that may may you open their hearts to hear from you, to know that indeed you love them and you, you have a purpose for each one of them. Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. As mentioned just now, I want to share with you two good news of the empty tomb. Two good news of the empty tomb. The first is this. The first good news is this, that we are set free from our sins. We are set free from our sins. See, this tomb, as I mentioned just now, was actually the place where Jesus Christ was laid. Three days before, Jesus was being crucified on the cross for the sins of the world, which was what happened on Good Friday itself 2,000 years ago ago. You may wonder, what is sin and why must Jesus die for us? Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, 
and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, this verse tells us sin is more than just bullying, smoking, or murdering. Sin is simply turning away, simply going away from God's ways and living according to our way. Sin is simply going away from God's ways and living life according to our ways where we believe that our way is better than God. Hear this, and hear this, no matter how good we think we may be, how many good works we have done, all of us here have sinned. I mean, how many of you here, you tell a lie before? If you never raise hand, you just told a lie, right? <laughs> how many of you here, you gossip about someone before? Right? See, no matter how much good works or charity we do, we can, we can never cover the wrongs we did as, far, as we fall short of the glory of the righteousness of God. And that's why Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. And just like how there are consequences to our wrongdoings, for example, in Singapore, if you murder, it leads to death sentence. Same thing, there are consequences to our sin. And that's why Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. And this death is not just a physical death, but it's an eternal separation from God. See, sin caused man to be eternally separated from God. See, in the beginning when God created mankind, His plan for man is to have a wonderful and loving relationship with Him. His plan is for man to experience all of His goodness, all of His love, so that we can never be in lack. We can never be in need. See, God is the source and sustainer of all good. He alone can satisfy our hearts. He alone can make us complete. But sin brought a stop to this, where it separates us from God. See, we need to understand that God is holy and righteous. That is His character. Hence, a sin, no matter how big or small we may think, is a big no to Him. For example, if I have a bottle of water right now, or a cup of water, and there's cockroach inside, will you drink? Right? Right? If you order coffee from some coffee place, and you see a cockroach or lizard, you confirm, report to Mothership or MSN News or whatever it is, right? You will not drink because it's what? It's contaminated. It's E. No way, all right? Similarly, God loves us, but He cannot stand sin. Because as long as there's sin in us, He can't draw close to us. In fact, He hates sin because it separates us from Him and His goodness that He wants to lavish on us. See, sin does, and sin doesn't just separate us from God. It destroys our life. Sin doesn't just separate us from God. It destroys our life. John 10, 10 says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This thief refers to the devil, and the devil is always waiting for a chance to destroy us, causing us to live a life of darkness, of hopelessness. And the sin in us actually gave him the permission to destroy us. You see, when you sin, as mentioned earlier, you turn away from God. And that allowed the devil, or give the devil the opportunity to influence us, to search for happiness, search for love and joy in all the wrong places, causing us to be trapped in our own sin, causing us to destroy our own life. One example was sin in the life of Shane Taylor. Many years back, he was one of the top six most dangerous inmates in Britain. In his growing up years, because he was bullied, he told himself that he must fight back. He must be strong. And that's why, at the age of 10, he committed his first crime, where he and a friend were at a swing, swimming pool and noticed a payphone was not locked properly. So they tore it open and stole the coins inside. This led him to a series of him stealing anything he, he could get in his hands, including cars. But the crimes he did just got worse in such a way that it was only going to lead to either his death or prison. In 2000, Taylor was, Shane Taylor was arrested on an attempted murder charge following a stabbing which was later dropped to a wounding with intent and a fray for which he received a sentence of four years and nine months. The incident which saw him plunge a nine-inch kitchen blade into a victim's head came about from a lifestyle where his crime escalated to the point where he had no fear of taking another life. During his days in prison too, he even stabbed a prison officer as he couldn't stand 
being told what to do. They led him to be, a max, to be in maximum security prison, being caged up in a very dark room. There was so much darkness in him surrounding him, he literally couldn't live a proper life. 17 years of his life going in and out of prison. Some of us here, we don't need to be in prison, in a physical prison, but we are chained by our addiction of smoking, stealing, violence, hatred, lying, that we can't seem to be getting out of it. But God loves us so much, and He doesn't want us to be destroyed by our own sin or be separated from us because of sin. And that's why on Good Friday, He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who had no sin, to die for our own sin. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 says, He personally carried our sin in His body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, He personally carried all our sin in His body such that we no longer face the consequences of sin when we accept Jesus into our life. All our sins are cancelled, washed away, forgiven. But it's not just that. Three days later, when Mary and Mary Magdalene wanted to go to his tomb to anoint his body with spice so that the body would not decompose and as part of honouring him, they realised the body of Christ was gone. And they saw him once again alive. In Matthew 28, verse 6 to 9 says, He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was lying, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I've told you. The woman ran quickly from the tomb, and they were frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went there, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grabbed his feet, and worshipped him. Jesus didn't just die for our sins so that we can be forgiven, but he overcame death so that we can be set free from our sin. Where we, can, where we, can, we ourselves, when we accept him into our life, we, are, we can overcome the sin of this world where sin had no longer has a hold on us anymore. And that's why Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall no longer be your master. For sin shall no longer be your master when you have Jesus in your life. You know, just now when our young people, when they enter the water of baptism, it actually symbolizes us being crucified on the cross with Jesus where, we are, where they are dead to sin. That's why when they go into the water, it's like they are dead to sin. That's like how Christ crucified on the cross. And when they emerge out of the water again, all right, we identify with the resurrection of Jesus where we are able to walk in a new life once again. Just like how Jesus overcame death when we are raised up from the water is to represent, is to tell the world that indeed we are overcome the sins in our life. We have overcome the sins in our life and we are able to walk in a new life with Christ. And that's why Colossians 2, 12 says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with Him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You know, just now I share with you about Shane Taylor, right? 17 years in and out of prison. But you know, because of his encounter with the Lord, he was set free from his sin. He overcame death. You know, in one of the prisons that he was attending, he attended an Alpha course. Alpha course is an eight weeks course about Christianity. He remembered that as he sat down on the chair knowing it's a Christian thing, he's like, oh no, why am I here? Right? It's a Christian thing. Why am I here? He didn't want to go. He was arguing, can I not go? Can I not attend? Right? But there was once a pastor came to him and told him, let me say to you a few scriptures first and be before we pray. And one of the verse was Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. And after that, the pastor explained to him that because of all our sin, Jesus had to die for us. And he encouraged Shane to pray. And he told God this, Please God, if you are real, come into my life because I hate who I am. Please God, if you are real, come into my life because I hate who I am. After he said this prayer, nothing happened. But as he was talking to the pastor, he started to feel this energy in his stomach. 
He started to rise up and rise up, causing him to break down in tears, crying uncontrollably. At that moment, he knew that it was God working and healing his life. And that changed his whole life. He knew that God is real and nothing would change the fact. Within weeks of the experience in 2006, Shane was out of segregation and working in a trusted position of the chaplaincy cleaner in the prison itself. He said, nobody could believe it. Some of the inmates would mock me, but I was not bothered. I would just run about preaching about Jesus because I was so happy. I would just run preaching about Jesus because I was so happy. He became a changed man. He overcame every addiction to violence and now a married man with four kids. He now is going to prison, not because of his crime anymore, but to go there to give support to his ex-convicts and ex-offenders through running the Alpha course. A man that was so addicted to violence, where he can just watch series of videos of people killing, and that's, that caused him to feel satisfied. A man that's so addicted to violence was set free from his sin because of what happened at the empty tomb. Christ overcame death so that sin has no longer have a hold on, on us. And this is the good news of the empty tomb. Christ died for all of us here, whether you believe in Him or not, so that we can, so that He can, and overcame death so that all of us here can have the opportunity to be set free from our sin and experience life. Two good news of the empty tomb. The first is this, that we are set free from our sin. The second is this, we are set apart for God's purposes. We are set apart for God's purposes. To be set apart for God's purposes is to live a life dedicated in following God. See, the empty tomb doesn't just represent Christ's overcoming death, but it shows us that we worship a God who is alive, who is present in the past, in the future, who is alive, who is everlasting, and that's why we can put our hope in Him, our life in Him. We can worship and serve Him because He is not dead, but He is alive. See, when Jesus was resurrected before He was ascended back to heaven, He gathered all His disciples and set them apart for His purposes. In Matthew 28, verse 16 and 20 says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Him, they worshipped Him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And that's why even after 2,000 years, Christianity is still being preached, is still being talked about, is still being worshipped because the God that we serve is not dead, but is alive. You know, there are many that try to debunk, but until now, no one has any hard evidence to prove that the resurrection is not real. You know, there was this man by the name of Lee Strobel, who he used to be an atheist, but this changed when his wife and wife received Christ. He was so angry the moment his wife received Christ, and he told himself that he would use his journalism training and legal training to begin an investigation into whether there was any credibility to Christianity or any world faith system for that matter. Thus, he began to focus on the resurrection of Jesus as this is the key of the Christian faith and the only evidence to prove that Jesus is God. And that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 14, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is our faith. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. Also, he himself has seen many dead bodies before as a reporter. Yet he never seen any of them being raised to life. Thus, if it's true that he's really one with God, because only God can bring about resurrection. Thinking that this investigation would just take a weekend or two, it became a year and nine months until November 8th of 1991. And on that day, he realized that in the light of the torrent of evidence flowing in the direction of the truth of Christianity, it would require more faith for him to maintain his atheism than to become a Christian. Because to be an atheist, he would have to swim upstream against all this evidence pointing towards the truth of Jesus Christ. And he couldn't do that. He was trained in journalism and law to respond to truth. And so on that day, he received Jesus Christ as his forgiver and as his Lord. I'm going to share with you 
fourth proof of, his resurre- of the resurrection in which he came out with during his one year and nine months of his research. Of course, the first question he needs to ask is this, did Jesus die on the cross? Right, before you can talk about resurrection, you need to ask yourself, did Jesus die on the cross? Is it real? And it's true, Jesus was dead. Every scholar in the world knows that Jesus did die on the cross. There was no record of anyone surviving the full Roman crucifixion. Even the Journal of American Medical Association, Association who did a scientific study on the death, <laughs> ah, association, all right, sorry, okay, who did a scientific study on the death of Jesus said, clearly the weight of evidence indicates that Jesus was dead even before the wound to his side was inflicted. Even an atheist by the name of Gerd Lundman says, historically, it's indisputable that Jesus was dead. The second proof that he came out with is the early accounts for the resurrection. And he said, we have a preserved for us a creed of the earliest Christian church. A creed is a former statement of Christian belief and in this creed contain an eyewitness report of the resurrection of Jesus. This creed has been dated back by scholars within months of the death of Jesus. The third proof he came out with is the empty tomb. For the body to be resurrected, it first must make sure the tomb is empty, there's no body there, correct? And if you look at Matthew 28, verse 11 to 14, it says, While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priest everything that had happened after they realized the tomb was empty, right? When the chief priest had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came the night during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. They have to devise a plan, a lie, on why the tomb is empty. So the tomb indeed is empty. And the last, or not, last, last proof, is eyewitnesses. Just like every crime scene, you need eyewitnesses, correct? And usually for crime scene, they will gather either one or two eyewitnesses for evidence. But hear this, we have no fewer than nine ancient sources inside and outside of the New Testament confirming that the disciples encounter the risen King, encounter Jesus Christ. And that's why he says this, this proving the resurrection wasn't easy. In fact, it was impossible. My research caused me to realize that the case for the resurrection of Jesus is powerful and persuasive. At the evidence led me to own my faith in Christ and the years since that investigation, I've been helping other Christians understand how we can have confidence in the biblical accounts of the resurrection. Here at this church, at Easter, We're not celebrating a holiday of eggs, bunny, or dinner on time with our families, no. But we're recognizing that Christ's resurrection authenticates His claim that He is the Son of God. You see, anyone can make claims about Him being a God, right? And Jesus certainly made divine claims about Himself. He claimed that He was a Son of God when He was on earth. But if if, if He actually came back from death, that affirms his divine identity and no human form can ever do that. And that's what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. Indeed, we worship a God who is alive, one who loves us and one who has a purpose for us. So two good news of the empty tomb. The first is this, that we are set free from our sin. The second is this, we are set apart for God's purposes. We are set apart for God's purposes. See, the empty tomb isn't just a reminder of what happened during Easter, but it shows us a God who loves us so much that He will give up His one and only Son to die for us on the cross so that our sin are washed away. Romans 5, 6 to 8 says, You see, at just the right time when we are still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated His own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. When I was reading this verse, I myself have one son. 
And I can't imagine giving up my one son for all of us here. But God loved us so much that He gave up His one and only Son for us all. Whether we receive Him or not, it didn't matter. Because He loved us so much, He doesn't want us sin to destroy us. He doesn't want us to be separate from Him. From him. And that is why He gave His one and only Son to die for us all. But not just that. Jesus overcame death. Jesus overcame death to show how great and powerful God is. So that we ourselves, when we receive Him into our life, we can walk in victory and live a life of faith, hope, and love. See, just like when a woman, when they saw the empty tomb, they were filled with great joy. They were filled with great joy when they saw the empty tomb. Matthew 28 verse 8, the woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. You know, like it or not, we live in a world filled with sin, filled with brokenness and pain, causing our lives, our hearts to be empty. But the good news is that we have a God who is alive, one that didn't just die but overcame death, one whose tomb became empty so that our lives can be filled. One whose tomb was empty so that our lives can be filled. And that's why 1 Corinthians 15 verse 55 to 57 says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? For sin is a sting that results in death and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I was just reading through all the testimonies of the various baptism candidates. So many of them, because of their constant encounter with the Lord, overcame anxiety, overcame anger, overcame unforgiveness, addiction to sin, which allowed them to live out the life God has for them. And today, this same God, who all of them encounter, wants to do the same to all of you here. Because He loves you. He's the only one then He can give us life to the fullest. Is there anyone here today you do not know God? You have not received Jesus into your life. I want to give you this wonderful opportunity. In a few moments' time, I want everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes and no one moving around. I will then lead you in a prayer of invitation for Jesus to come into your life, to forgive all your sin and to make you a child of God. And I want you to follow me by praying aloud line by line and word for word. You see, the Bible says you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. So don't just mouth those words alone, but mean them in your heart. And if you do that, Jesus will forgive your sin and come into your life as your Lord and Saviour. Some of you may say in your heart, Pastor, just now what you shared made sense. I, I want to give my life, but I still have many questions and doubts. I'm not sure if I have enough faith to receive Christ or to be saved. If that's what you're thinking, I have good news for you. The Bible tells us a faith as small as a mustard seed is all it takes for you to be saved. It's never about how great our faith is that matters, but how great the God whom you put your faith that matters. So never mind about the faith that you don't have, but just exercise the little faith that you have and you will be saved. Or some of you may be saying, but I'm not good enough. There's just so much mess in my life. I make a lot of mistakes. That's why you need God to help you through. Just like how God helped Shane Taylor to overcome all his addiction. God can do the same for you because He loves you. Some of you here, your heart may be touched by what, what I shared just now. Or maybe you may be thinking, maybe I'll wait another day to receive Christ. But the Lord says today in the Bible, today if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. Today if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart for you do not know if you have another opportunity to hear the good, the good news. So right now, I'd like to everyone to bow your head and to close your eyes. If that's who you are today, where you'd like to invite Jesus into your life or some of you here, maybe you, have, you, you, have been, you grew up in church just like Ian, but you never personally invited Jesus into your life. Today, I want to encourage you to repeat after me in the prayer line by line and word for word. And I'm leading them into prayer, to prayer. I want all the Christians here 
to join in so that they will know that they are not alone, but they are part of this family. Come, let's close our eyes right now. And I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Please repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for my sin on the cross. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for my sins on the cross. Thank you for giving your life for me. Thank you for giving your life for me. Today I open my heart to you. Today I open my heart to you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my heart. And fill my heart with your joy. And fill my heart with your joy. Fill my heart with your love. Fill my heart with your love. Lord, we, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want everyone to continue to keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. And I believe many of you here, you say this prayer for the very first time. Or maybe you never mouth the words, but you know that your heart is touched by God. If that's who you are, I'd like to, you to raise your hand later at the count of three. Because I want to pray for you. So with no one moving, no eyes closed, if that's who you are, say, yes, I want to receive Christ. I want to receive His love. If that's who you are, you pray this prayer for the very first time. Or maybe you grew up in church, but you never personally invited Him to your life. If that's who you are, at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. Or you can just open your palms wherever you are. One, two, three. If that's who you are today, will you just raise your hand? Because I want to pray a blessing over you. Yes. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who raised their hands or opened up their hands. Lord, I pray this day, fill their hearts with your love because I know only you complete their life. So I pray from this day onwards, they will experience your presence, they will experience your joy, and they will experience your love. In Jesus' most precious name, we all pray. Amen. Can we just give our loudest praise to the Lord? Amen. Come, let's stand up and give our loudest praise to the Lord. <laughs> you know, if you have said this prayer for the very first time, you know, we have a QR code here because we want to connect with you. You mean a lot to us. You are part of our family. All right, so I want to encourage you to scan this QR code or you can ask your friend to help you with this. But for the rest of us, you know, I was just preparing this sermon I just sense that um, some of us here, we need, we need hope. Maybe for the past few weeks or even years, you have not heard the voice of God. You feel distant from Him. Maybe some of us, we are going through certain darkness and we just feel that there's no breakthrough in our lives. But the Lord loves you. And the Lord says to you, don't give up on me. For I'm still working your life. You never know. But today, will you take this step of faith to say, Yes, Lord, I want to come back to you. And those of you who are living in darkness or you are struggling today, I say, Lord, I need your help. Will you come to the front and say, that, Lord, this day, I need your help. I need you, Lord. I need you to tell, I need you to tell me that, God, you are real. I need you to tell me that you are still helping me. You're not leaving me alone because I'm struggling badly. So we're going to sing this song, Living Hope. Our God is a living hope. He's not dead. Trust me, He is not dead. But we need to take the step of faith to say, God, I'm coming back to you and I will not let you go. So if that's who you are, will you just come to the front right now as we worship God with this song? The altar is open. If that's who you are, you know you are struggling. Whether it's your faith or you are struggling in darkness, the Lord says, to you, will you come back to Him? For He will give you the strength to overcome. Or some of you here, you've been addicted to certain sin in your life and you can't seem to get it out. The Lord says today, call upon the name of Jesus for His name is powerful. So the altar is open right now. If that's who you are, why don't you just come to the front as we worship God in this song. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I 
the leaders to just come to the front to minister to the young people here. So just now I was just worshipping I just sense that some of us here we've been going back to an empty home the Lord says today I am your heavenly father that loves you and when you call upon my name I want to show you that you are not alone so if that's who you are today you can just maybe turn to the person next to you and ask can you just pray for me but for the rest of us here 
I want you to turn to, I want you to find a partner right now. Why don't you pray for one another? Is there something in your life you're looking for breakthroughs? Because this song, Living Hope, is seeking God, that God this day, I want to trust in you, that there is still hope in a situation that seems hopeless. So if that's who you are, I just want to right now just find a partner and just pray and just ask them, is there something that you've been struggling? They're asking God for breakthroughs and why don't we just pray for one another? Once you're down, I just want to pray a prayer over you. I'll give you about 10 more seconds. <laughs> Once you're down, why don't we just put our hands upon our hearts right now? Lord, just commit all your sons and daughters into your hands. Lord, I ask right now you fill their hearts with your love. The Lord says today, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. The Lord is here and He wants to fill our hearts with hope once again. So I pray right now for all your sons and daughters, they will live this place in confidence knowing that they are loved, knowing they are set free from their sin, knowing that they have a purpose in you, and knowing that you're always with them all the days of their lives. So Lord, this day I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in just most precious name we all pray. Amen. Can we give our loudest praise to the Lord? Amen. Tell the person next to you, God really loves you again. And the doors and to exit, can you please exit from the left and the right on my side? Alright, so that we can prepare for the next service. And God bless you. We'll see you next week for youth service. Yeah.